When it comes to spectacular video game landscapes, Halo Combat Evolved is right at the top of the list. When the game first came out, it seemed simple enough. Just another game about a pretty cool guy, it kills aliens, and doesn't afraid of anything. What is that thing, Lieutenant? Hell if I know. We're landing on it. But what we got was so much more. A superbly satisfying console shooter with unmatched visuals, a deep and smartly written lore, and a supposedly super intelligent and inexplicably naked AI companion who, in retrospect, is supremely gifted in pointing out the blindingly obvious. This cave is not a natural formation. What's fascinating to me is how Halo went beyond the beautiful alien landscapes of the ring world itself and blew up in the collective consciousness, redefining how people interacted with games, creating new, priceless cultural artifacts. Hey. You ever wonder why we're here? So with the release of Halo Anniversary on PC, Halo Infinite on the way, seriously just, just look at it and the actual real world under threat from an exponentially multiplying mindless alien parasite, I figured the time was right to try doing a painting inspired by one of the most iconic game franchises of all time. So let's get started. We'll begin with this kind of grubby canvas that I dug out from storage under the house, followed by gently tossing some gesso. And that's the first euphemism of the video. Three seconds in, must be a new record. Using an artist's palette created using the time-honored method of grabbing an ice cream container lid, I'll now paint half the canvas with black gesso and the other half with white, for reasons that will actually make sense quite soon. And now it's about time to flick some stars into existence, followed by creating a couple of stencils out of the kind of fake marble contact paper most commonly used by desperately bored middle-aged Karens to redecorate their kitchens. Incidentally, my dad's wife is called Karen and she's a lovely woman. I'm sorry the internet hit on your name as a universal pejorative for horrible boomers. Stencil in place, we're going to paint the titular halo, and now that I look at it, the majestic ring rising above the horizon kind of looks like butt cheeks in a thong, and now that I can't unsee it, I hope you can't too. But now, it's time for the most satisfying moment in my life, after my wedding day, and I'm just going to let you enjoy this. Oh yeah! I can't believe how good that looks. That was Nailed it. Things are going suspiciously well. I want the ring to have a daytime stars effect, so I've added liquid clear medium to the top of the painting, liquid white to the bottom, and I'm mixing that on the canvas to create a sky, oops, looks like I blew it a little too hard, and an ocean. Now I'll aggressively check that my camera's still on, and channel some of that aggression into twisting my fan brush into the canvas to make some nice, happy little clouds. We'll give those clouds a good fluffing and then we'll mix up some blue, brown and crimson into a dark mountainous colour. And we'll just make a big decision and put a mountain here. No, okay, how about here? Never mind, we'll just put them over here instead. Those are starting to look pretty nice and icy, so let's go back to the side of our earlier mountain indecision decision, take a deep breath, and there we go. A big splotch of black all over the canvas. Then out the base of it, add some titanium white snow, and now they look more or less like mountains. Pop a shadow on the non-starlit side, give the base of the mountains a nice sensual tapping, and then we'll use a fan brush to add some forests and greenery to the bases of each mountain range. Finish the forests, add just the gist of mist to the bases, and now refer to your sketchbook and drum your fingers anxiously while you try to figure out what's wrong with this picture, because something definitely is. I think I've figured it out, that mountain needs to be marginally less majestic. It just looks a bit too close. To make it further away, I'll have to break out the paper towels and palette knife and ruin the last hour or so of work by scraping it off the canvas. Once that's done, I'll redo the base of the mountain by pulling out some of the mountain color and adding grasslands in green. To that, I'll add very far away trees with the fan brush to create the illusion of very far away trees. And now I'm scraping more paint off the canvas to make the basic shape of a kind of 
sci-fi plasma shooting universe spanning genocidal cabin. Oh, and here's a magic trick. Just hold up your pallet. Look, trees. Put in some of those rocks so you've got space to hide and recharge your shields when you're being strafed by Covenant Elites on a legendary playthrough. And charge your brush with Galactic Parasite Blood Green to paint a lovely grassy field upside down. Add some highlights to that field that's now looking like a lovely place to chill out and contemplate the works of Vanished God tier Forerunner civilizations and then ruin it all by adding a tree trunk. Spend a while adding bark, limbs and leaves, making a few minute adjustments to the rest of the painting here and there, add a couple more trees in the middle distance and we'll be left with a great place for Master Chief to sit down and think about his post-heroic career. Who knows, maybe he'll become a Master Chef. Unfortunately, this bit of the painting is working about as well as the storyline of Halo 5, so we're going to do the sensible thing and completely rework it. We'll just scrape off that abomination and create the shape of a Halo Combat Evolved era Mjolnir Mark V Spartan helmet. That looked easy, didn't it? Yeah, nah, it actually took me about two days. The frustration got to a point where things got a bit weird and I started procrastinating by making truly terrible memes. I'm not sure what to blame, the frustration, the poisonous solvent fumes in an enclosed space, or the enforced isolation during a global pandemic, but I feel like I just can't make this bit of the painting work. So I'll try mixing it up a bit, uh, going for a bit of a fresh perspective, fiddling with the details here and there, adding a shadow to the top of the ring. It's one of the toughest bits of a tricky painting, deciding whether to call it finished despite your dissatisfaction, or to carry on. This is the point where critique can really help, and luckily my brother came through with some really useful advice. So, let's get to work. The main problem is the perspective on the helmet. It's a bit off, and it's going to take me a while to fix it, but it's doable. I'll rework the helmet, crack my knuckles, and give this bottle a good shaking to relieve a bit of tension, and sign this painting and call it done. Well, not quite done. I guess I could always just fix this rock and touch up this bloodstain. And now it's actually done. Cue the haunting Halo Choir. Oh, I'm sorry, here's the actual hauntingly beautiful choir. Thanks for watching.